Okay. So to intro this this lesson, I'm going to talk about something that may seem a little bit off topic, and I'll kind of try to help to guide it in at the end. <clears throat> okay. So I don't think it's any surprise that traditional nuclear families are are very much in decline. And what I mean by that are, is the typical um, father son. I, I'm sorry, uh, husband, <laughs> husband, wife, you know, child with a pick white fence, you know, that traditional family. It's very much so not really, in fact, it, not, not so much is it not really a thing anymore. Well it, well, it is a thing, but I mean, it's not as big of a thing anymore. But a lot of people don't even want that anymore. You know what I mean? It's a lot of people who, that, that American dream is just kind of uh, not really there. Um and a large portion, and an increasing, I should say, an increasing number of households, um, there is either um, not both parents there, or there are, and they just aren't as active as as they necessarily could be. Um, and so the, we're just seeing a lot of the traditional family, or what people thought the traditional family was, either or, um, very much in decline. Um, there is an increase in acceptance of divorce. People are, are don't look at, look down at it like they did, did before. Um, and whereas, um, see, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a confusion on this. So let me try to clarify it. Some people have said the divorce rate is around 50%. It's actually not accurate. Um, not as many people nowadays are getting married, so the marriages has dropped. The marriage rate has dropped. Then uh, those who are married, um, many are getting getting divorced. So within the church, the divorce rate is somewhere in the 33%, somewhere around there. Um, and outside of the church, it's just a little bit higher. It's closer to 40, I think. Um, but with that being said. Divorce isn't as big of a thing anymore. Um, you know, a lot of people that just talk about it in like passing. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. You know, um, <clears throat> and as a result, they've linked a lot of different things um, that happen in the kids with an unstable home environment. Um, underachievers, worried, angry, feel rejected. Um, a lot of times, um, these kids don't have that good of a time in school. Um, you know, they either are picked on or they pick on kids or whatever. It just you can kind of feel the tension that from that's in the household kind of carries over into the school uh, and whatnot. Um, but there is, like I said, fewer people getting getting married, more people living together, um, uh, and also as a result of you know that sex outside of marriage. Obviously, the logical conclusion of that is that there are more people having kids outside of marriage. And the more and the moral standards that were once, you know, such a big thing, you know, are actually now considered by many, even in the church, is you know, not even that big of a deal. In fact, many people in the church say say things like such as this: uh, it's not that big of a deal to have sex outside of marriage. See what I mean? Um, and and so it's just a, a change. Um, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to condemn or um, accept it either or at this point. I'm just trying to bring reference to it. Um, so the percentage of children who grew up to without fathers to be rapists is 60 percent. Adolescent murderers, 72 uh, percent. Long-term prison inmates, 70 percent. Simply having a father in the household, not even a good father, not an active father, just having a father in the household reduces your uh, the uh, the the odds of uh, ending up in a um in a in a prison or in other uh, um, illegal activities. Um, Kind of a weird thing there, but I mean. It could probably be because of like the uh, just the sense of authority. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, it, that can change a lot. Yeah, I think I think that that's a big thing too. One of the things that I was I was thinking about is maybe it has something to do with just um, feeling abandoned or not feeling yeah. loved. You know what I mean? Uh, Wanting that, attention. Yeah, and in fact, counselors say this all the time. You know. Who we are as kids, it's not like when we become an adult, we just magically transform into an adult. We carry that person over, you know. Mm -hmm. The things that mold us as, as a child continues to mold us into an adult. So, I mean, it carries over. Um, but yeah, uh, which is one of the reasons why when I hear, you know, fathers say, I'm just concerned I'm not going to be a good father. Statistically speaking, it doesn't matter as long as you're there. <laughs> you know, making a mistake is better than not being there to make the mistake. <laughs> so... Um, increasing amount of mothers working outside of the home, whereas before it was normal uh, for, for you know for the woman to take care of the house, she stayed at the house and that was her job to do, um, and the ha husband worked outside of the house. Nowadays, not really as big of a factor. Uh, in fact, even in the households where the um, 
where the mother and father are both there, and even if they're married, you see a lot of times now where the, where uh, they will both work outside of the house, um, especially in the more um, let's just say big the bigger cities like Albuquerque. You know, well that's not a very big city, but you know, I mean bigger cities than this. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, that that that's that's a huge factor. Um, decreasing time spent with kids, uh, forty percent, uh, forty-six percent of high schoolers uh, said that they wanted more time with their family. High schoolers, so we're not talking about kids; we're talking about high schoolers, you know. Um, and then I, obviously some of them said other things. I think it was like eleven percent or something like that said that they wanted um, uh, more stuff, like you know, bigger TVs and stuff like that. I, I don't remember the statistics on that part, but I do remember that 46% of the high scores said that they wanted more family time. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, if you're pulling 40 hours a week, you're not gonna exactly going to be thrilled to come home and say, yes, let's play some more, even though I just feel like lying on the couch and vegging out. You know what I mean? Um, uh, obviously, the in increased family violence as well is, is, is kind of a big thing, which for some reason actually doesn't get as much attention uh, now. As before, what they used to do is they would demonize this. Like, if, if you did the smallest thing, like, you know, you were turned into, like, the world's worst person, which I'm not condoning, you know, <laughs> household abuse, I'm just saying. Like, you knew, oh, this guy, is, that's a, that guy's a bad father. Nowadays, um, I mean, like, CYFD does do a lot of different things and whatnot, but... Sometimes overlooked. Yeah. There's a lot of cases overlooked. Like, you'll have a father who's alcoholic to the max, and very verbally abusive that nothing is ever done about it. And in fact, it's accepted as normal activity. You know what I mean? And th that's not normal activity. You know? um, but anyways, alcohol was a large contributor to uh, the household violence uh, cases. Um, however, to different degrees. Different people handle alcohol differently. Also, different factors contribute to how much alcohol was partaken at any given time. So... Um, Negatively impacts child's growth and development. I mean, this is just stuff that I've already kind of mentioned. Um, and then we have the the, the just landscape issues itself. Um, growth of relativism. You know, I, I make my own way as long as I think that it's right. It's okay. Uh, pleasure comes first. Globalization. With everything on the internet, you know, you, you can know what's happening across the world instantaneously. Whereas before, things were a little more localized. You know what I mean? It, maybe it would be in the paper tomorrow or maybe it would be in the paper at the weekend or, you know, whatever. Um, and then you go back farther than that, you was thing where they didn't have papers. So, you know, see what I mean? Um, <clears throat> globalization is, is a big factor. Um, nothing matters that goes hand-in-hand hand with relativism. Uh, materialism, obviously, as as uh, as spirituality kind of declines, materialism always takes up the extra um, leash there because people who are not satisfied look for different things to be satisfied. If they're looking for something to be satisfied, they're going to be buying things. See what I mean? Materialism. Um... Uh, lawless sex, you know, the idea of, of um, sex without boundaries where, where it's just, hey, let's just be, I can't say it, but it's F buddies, you know, um, where the idea is, you know, you, there's no commitment, you just go and have sex with this person and you go on, you know, and, and sex was not meant to be something that's just meant for pleasure, it was meant to be something to unite two people. The Bible says, uh, for this reason, two people shall leave their, leave their uh, mother and father and cleave to each other, they become one flesh, and that was meant to be that 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 um, that aspect of that relationship that was meant for that relationship, not outside of that relationship. So obviously, um, substance abuse, uh, not just alcohol. You know, it really comes all. I keep hearing different things all over the place of, of what different high schoolers are trying to get high. I heard. I think it was you told me something the other day about Benadryl or something, and I'm just thinking like, wow, that's really hopping out there. Like, okay. Um, when I was a kid, um, they kept talking about huffing paint. And uh, I don't know if that's still a thing or not, but evidently Benadryl's a thing. And why not? <laughs> um, hand sanitizer, too, because I knew kids that used to do hand sanitizer. Ew. With pixie sticks, they would smoke pixie sticks. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, <laughs> risk taking is higher, violence is higher. Uh, depression, suicide, loss of spirituality. You know, these are all things that are kind of just going around us. Um, so I think it's very clear that America's landscape, landscape is changing. I'm trying not to spend too much time on this. Any questions about this? This is just to introduce the idea that, that America is changing. That's all I want you to get from this, okay? I'm not, I don't want this to be, that's not the lesson. That's just to segue into the lesson, okay? Um, 
so behind all this, I say that all that, that I just said to say this. If you reach the kids, you reach the world. First off, when you reach the kids, it opens up the door to the parents. But second off, the kids of today become the adults of tomorrow. And the things that happen to kids today change who they become as adults. See what I mean? Which is why I personally believe that child and teen ministry is the single most important thing that a church can do ministry-wise. Wednesday night Bible study, that's all good and well. Sunday services, that's fine. That, that's great. I think that those things are all good, all good and well. But I think the single most important thing that any church can ever do are child and teen ministries. Honestly, I, I, I fully believe that. Because once again, these are people who are developing. I mean, they're not adults yet. They don't have it all figured out yet. <laughs> they're still growing, and you can you can you can uh, you can lay that seed there. Um, yeah, and and a lot of the things that we're seeing from people as adults is kids who weren't given the adequate time. As as the nuclear family was breaking apart, you had you know kids growing up without the direction of of their parents or you know this that or the other thing, and so as a result, you had people who grew up and oh well, that person doesn't have any common sense. Well, is it so common if there was no one there to teach them it? See what I mean? We have a lot of a lot of well. I hope this isn't offending. Douchebag kids growing up in the world today because they don't have anybody showing them the right way. You know what I mean? Like, well, I think you guys know what I mean. So, um, so what we see is that media, and what I mean by media is, is what's on the television, the movies, the music. It is both shaping and reflecting the culture. It is both shaping and reflecting. First off, it's shaping. Because these kids who aren't don't have active people in their life, they're listening to, these, to this music, they're watching these shows, and they're taking their cues as to how to be an adult and how to live from what's on the television, from what's on the music. Because they don't have anyone else. And so you get a bunch of kids, and they're all around their peers, influencing each other. Well, of course they're going to come up with some stupid ideas. See what I mean? There's a lack of guidance, there's a lack of direction. Just like, the, just like Somalia, it doesn't have any government. It's falling apart. It needs someone leading them, and they're just a bunch of people at war. You know what I mean? Um, it's the exact same kind of thing in a more um, uh, household context. But it also reflects the culture because as these kids grow up, they become the artists of tomorrow. They become the, the directors of the shows and the writers of the shows and of the movies and whatnot. So you have it both being shaped by and shaping. It's like a two-way street. You know what I mean? And so you have a lot of things, and, and there's a show that's coming out, or is already out, I'm not sure, where the son is a homosexual. See what I mean? Because that's that, that's what's happening in, in, in the culture today. Um, the broken families are a lot more common on shows. Remember the, the old black and white shows? They had, uh, what was it, Leave it to Beaver or whatever? Your, your traditional nuclear family. The, the, the father worked outside the house, the, the mom was a stay-at-home mom, you remember this? See what I mean? Uh, the Brady Bunch, pretty much the exact same thing, just on a larger scale. Now, nowadays, the, the shows that are popular aren't necessarily your typical traditional nuclear families. You know what I mean? They they don't necessarily have the, both the mother and the father there. They don't necessarily have a healthy home environment. Sometimes they don't even have a house. Sometimes they, they like, look, take for instance, My Name is Earl. Great example. And I'm not condemning the show or anything. I'm just using an example. Um... You have this 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 redneck guy that just married this tra trailer trash girl, and then she divorces him for this other guy that she was sleeping with while she was still married to this other guy. See what I mean? It's a joke. It's a comedy show. But, I mean, that is happening in the world today. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, I hope that that just kind of gives, you know, television is changing, and, and people are changing. I mean, I hear so many people say, if we could just go take the America back to how it used to be. You can't. It's always changing. Every generation is different. I mean, for for better and for worse, it's changing. It's not something you can stop. Um, if you are interested more in this kind of stuff and, and how to address this, uh, Walt Mueller wrote a fantastic book called Youth Culture 101. I actually used it in my uh, for one of my college classes. Really a great book. Um, he has a lot more to say. In fact, a lot of what I just got was from that book. Um, and, and he's just a, a, a great guy, has a real heart for, for um, kids' ministries, and, and I, I I really think that that book was something that uh, influenced. So, any questions on that? Any of that? Okay. Uh, are you guys... Do you need, you need more, another minute? Okay. So that takes us to our first question. 
I was really trying to blow through that so we could get into the actual content. I didn't want it to take too long. Why do you think child or teen ministry is not recognized as one of the most important ministries? Some people may think that kids are too young to understand. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Hmm. Yeah. I think you're um, right. I think also uh, a lot of people don't understand how to teach them on their level. Okay. Yeah. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit? Um, well, like me, for instance, before I became kids' church, I was kind of scared to teach kids yeah. because I didn't know how to tell them about the Holy Spirit and about baptism. I hear what you're saying. And, you know... Another example of that, my fourth grade teacher taught us college grade, college level Bible. Wow. Mm. And like each week the packets were like that thick. Wow. For fourth grade students. Wow. Like she didn't understand how to teach it at, at a fourth grade level. Wow. I'm just thinking, like thank actually, God I was in that class. Through all my schooling, it was pretty high levels. So yeah. Wow. All wow. the years I went to the spiritual school, it was, it was pretty fast paced. It was... Hmm. One thing after another, one week after another, just constant. Nicole, you let down your secret. Now we're expecting so much more from you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know really how, but I think that's... I know, I'm just kidding. I think maybe because most of the church has been done. Okay. Forget about. So the generation gap is what you're... Okay. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you elaborate a little bit more about how that um, could potentially be a factor? Well, like... Being at my age, I don't think that much about things for the old people. Oh, okay. You know? And so I would think that the old people aren't thinking that much about things for kids. You know? Okay. So did everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Basically, you relate to people on, on, on right. whatever level you're at, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good point. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. That's a good point. Did anybody else have anything else? Were you going to say something? I don't want to skip you if you were. Well, I was going to say something, but I don't know if it really applies to most churches. I think it would maybe apply to like one or two. Okay, go ahead and say it. What's the worst? I was going to say kids and teens don't really... <laughs> it sounds terrible, but they don't bring any like... And money okay, and stuff. so revenue purposes. Okay, yeah. that's actually a good point. That actually is a good point. There are some churches who are more concerned with uh, uh, the important work of filling the pews with adults, so that they, not, not that, but also because you know we need to get our budget, budget up and stuff. So that actually is a good point. Um, maybe not for all churches, but yes, it is still relevant. And there is always that temptation. I'll tell you as a pastor, there's always that temptation to cater towards people who can financially benefit. <laughs> There's always that temptation, <laughs> especially it seems how that's how we get our paycheck. <laughs> so, uh, we right? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. If I'm a Christian, what does it matter what television I watch, or does it matter? Either way. Um, well, for one, you can't ever unsee what you've seen. Are you talking about human centipede? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, okay. Not that you've seen Once that. Once it's in your mind, it stays there forever. And, like, you'll just be, like, doing whatever, and then all of a sudden you remember something you saw on TV, and you're like, ugh, oh, crap, why did I watch that? What my brain does is it reminds me of stupid things that I've done. While I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it just, and then I think sometimes it, it tempts us more to do things we're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, this, this doesn't apply to anybody. Um... It's a, it's, a, it's a stupid, silly example, okay. but it's a, it's a show off. Um, say I am not supposed to eat any pork. 
but I love pork. You told them you wouldn't tell them about this. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm watching the, uh, the uh, Food Network, and they're cooking all week pork. And I'm like, sweet. And so I'm sitting in front of the TV watching them cook pork. I see and then what you're finally, saying. by the third day, I'm eating pork. I got what you're saying. No. Yeah. So, pork's bad then? or No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Anything else? And sometimes TV shows support like the use of drugs and alcohol. Okay. Uh, yeah. Big time. Like, yeah. There are like shows like Drug Inc. Yeah. It's like some people may watch it and think, oh, you know, drugs are okay. And everything. No. But in reality, yeah, like it's a TV uh, line to you. Yeah, and actually that's a good point. Like, for instance, uh, not to and once again not trying to pick sides here or anything, but on, on there's a show called Tosh Point oh. And he's a he's a heavy condoner that if you disagree with something, you are hating on it. Okay, like he talks frequently about how if you disagree with homosexuality, it's a you know you just you hate. You hate yeah, I don't hate homosexuals. Is it homosexuals? I don't hate child molesters. I just don't think that sex is for anyone except for someone who's married to another person. I mean, I don't hate any. <laughs> It has nothing to do with it, but once again, uh, people watch that show who don't have that that spiritual guidance. They don't have uh, their a parental guidance. You know, they're gonna think, "Oh, I have to be ex completely accepting of this, and it's wrong for me not to be." And then they grow up to to be those people who say, "Hate speech, hate speech," and it's like, "Well, why do you say that?" Well, because I grew up thinking it. Not to say that Tosh Pino is completely to blame. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying your point about you know so. Sorry for taking that so far off. <laughs> and, and did you have anything else to no. say? Because I kind of did hijack that thing. No, <laughs> Okay. Anybody else? Also, I think they play on your emotions as well. Like, okay. especially, like, drama shows. Ah, I see where like, you're going. I can totally... I After watching a drama show, I totally see my, my mood changing, and I'm like, whoa. I'm not actually involved in this TV show. I need to like back it up a few steps. This didn't really happen to me. Yeah, <laughs> buddy, to go. that happens to me, and I get emotionally invested. I'm like, yeah. I'll be on a crappy mood all the rest of the day because I'm like, he died, and they're like, who died? Oh, a fictional person in a television <laughs> show. <laughs> and honestly, that's why I stopped watching, watching Doctor Who because I was getting so emotionally involved. <laughs> My ex-boyfriend, I ended up getting him into it, <laughs> and, made it and got him obsessed with it, <laughs> and it just spiraled out of control. Wow. <laughs> Doctor Who, wrecking relationships. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else? Is it getting a little dark in here? Oh, yeah, I don't feel like Do you guys want me to turn on the light? Okay. So let's talk about hidden messages. <clears throat> and I hope that I'll be able to get this where you'll be able to hear it. If it wants to work. I thought you pushed shift. It's not happy with me. Oh, 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 it did open. Okay, here we go. There we go. Now, I want you guys to, to watch this and pay attention to the different things with it, okay? So we're supposed to pick out the hidden messages? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll explain. It's not like a, it's not like the game from the, from the, it's not like a test or anything. Um, uh-oh. I'm sorry. Hold on. It's not. Oh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me turn it up, okay? Hold on. Let's try this again, huh? Even without makeup. 
But tonight is definitely a glam night. Facial hair, makeup, touch up, glamming it up. It's all part of my job. With Olay Clean Beautiful Skin, that's my cleanser's job. Challenge what's possible with Olay Dual Action Cleanser. It seems deep down to the core, rejuvenating your complexion for skin that's fresh and naturally beautiful, even without makeup. But tonight is definitely a glam night. Facial cleansers by Olay. Challenge what's possible. Now, notice how the words will often... Oh, no, 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 no. No, don't play. No. Uh, notice how the stupid YouTube. Notice how the words will oftentimes. Like, why would it suggest that? Why is that a thing? Okay. Well, that's awkward. Anyways, uh, <laughs> what was I even talking about? Uh, oh yes. Notice how the words back up what the imagery is already showing. What did she say about about the, the, the stuff for her skin? Clean, beautiful, right? What was the what was the backdrop? Well a lighter color, she was wearing white clothes. What what does white relay in your mind? Clean. See what I mean? And and then often a lot of people think that Carrie Underwood is a beautiful person. So they got Carrie Underwood for it. See what I mean? Relaying the things that you're hearing, so you're seeing things, you're you're hearing things and subconsciously you're thinking, oh that'll make me look like that. Do you know what I mean? It plays on your subconscious mind. Now, I don't have any problem with Olay, just so we're all on the same page here. Uh, <laughs> I do have a problem with that random thing showing up. Jeez, don't talk faster. Uh, but anyways, so it has the idea of happiness, success, beauty. Did you notice how it ended with her on the stage getting ready to perform? Success. See you know what I mean? This is this is a product that's going to help you. It's going to it's going to make your wildest dreams come through. Uh, come true. She looked very happy. She came. She came. She came up looking, looking very, very nice and clean. Um, so it, ha it has those different, those different things there. And I'm not saying necessarily that it's bad. I'm just trying to show you how there are hidden messages in everything that we watch. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's try this again. Let me do this. I didn't know this was going to take this long. It's coming up on the edge of the screen. It shows the randomest things. One day I was looking up uh, videos for I think it was Skyrim or something, which is a video game, right? And it, it had over the over to the side something to do with like. Uh, an Indian porno? I was like, on, on YouTube? There's pornos on YouTube? I'm not even going to try to enlarge it, guys. I had enough of that last time. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Okay. See, this is irritating. Look at how how creepy that is. Goodness sakes. And of course, YouTube is, is suggesting all these gross things the night that I'm doing a lesson. Jeez. So, is that commercial still going? Because I want some honey chipotle chicken and some Texas chili fries. Did you did you see how did you see how you're hungry now? Did you guys see that? So, what did it have? It had it had satisfaction. Did you see how when they when they were brought bringing out the different options you can have, they laid out all the plates at the same time. Mm -hmm. Did you know that that's not actually how much food you get? You pick one of those plates. Or two of them, or whatever. And they always make it look better than it really is. Right, and there's more on those appetizer plates than there actually are when you go in. Like, it'll look this big, and it's actually this big. Now, I love chilies. 
So I'm not like trying to defame the almighty Chile. I'm just saying, uh, you know, the, it, it's the advertising thing. Uh, if you if you eat here, you'll be satisfied. You, you will you will you will leave feeling so happy. And and you know the thing is, is a meal is just a meal at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like it, you're gonna get hungry again. You're gonna need to eat again. But they make it look like this is the last meal you'll ever need. Did you notice that? Like if you eat this, you'll be content for the rest of your life. Um, obviously, food that you want, you want this. Um, and plus, you're saving money. It's $20. What? See so, I mean? Like, it, it, they, they were things in a way where it's like, well, yeah, but... You know what I mean? Um, I don't really want to belabor that point. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah. Let me get back over here. Okay. So, here's one. Um, I really like Disneyland. And I think this commercial just wonderfully um, shows um, hold on let me pull this over there we go let's hope it doesn't suggest any more porno <laughs> jeez what did you guys talk about in yams tonight porn we even I saw some watched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah It moves us all, the desire to gather. Oh, come on. Gathering with your circle of loved ones. To get started, call 1407-W-Disney. Okay, so let's kind of take this commercial apart. Did you guys happen to notice the people at the beginning who saw the sun, what they were doing? They were doing their their, their monotonous day-to-day -day things. The one person was at work. The one mom was feeding her kids. You know what I mean? They were doing the, those things that they do every single day. Do you ever get tired of the grind? See what I mean? So then they they appealed to your memories. Most of you probably know where that song came from and what they were playing off of. The Lion King. I mean, come on. And they had they even had the part, you know what I mean? And that conjured up, psychologically speaking, it should have conjured up a happy feeling that you, that you had from when you were a child. It should have. If you didn't, then your childhood just sucked. Uh, so it should conjure up that, that idea in you and for you think, oh, I can make a happy family with, uh, happy memory with my family. See what I mean? It, it kind of – it's supposed to conjure up that more emotional vibe. Does that make sense? Um, and Disney is so big that they can actually do that, and most of the time the message will hit pretty hard because, I mean, who hasn't seen Disney? Come on. Um so they played off memories and the idea of if you if you do this, you know, you'll be making lifelong memories that, you know, will always be with you and your kids. Because um, how many how many of you remember? Oh man, I remember how, how much I liked watching Lion King and man, my kids are gonna have so much fun watching that movie. See what I mean? You start thinking like that and it, you want to take them to Disneyland or Park or World. I think was that which one that one was. Anyways, uh, also if you notice the family unity, everybody was there. They were smiling. They they weren't in their work clothes anymore. They and they all had relaxing clothes on. Notice the bright colors that they were wearing when they were at when they were at Disneyland or Disney World or whatever. But when they weren't, they had a real worn down look on their face until they saw the sun. Notice that? See what I mean? It's that playing on you, um, kind of, on you kind of thing. Um, if you go, they'll be relaxing. You'll be you'll get freedom from the obligation. You'll, all, you know all these different things <coughs> things that they were basically promising you by their advertisements. See what I mean? And so there's these little hidden messages in everything. I mean, it's everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. There's going to be hidden messages. Buy our product. This that some are more sinister, like satanic, which is what I'm going to look at the next one. Um, but most of them are are more of um, buy. You know what I mean? Um, but it's in everything. It's even in our music that we listen to. I mean, it's everywhere. Um, 
<clears throat> so that takes us to a movie called Nine. Um, the director of this movie is um, Tim Burton, who is uh, famously weird. Okay, let's be honest here. Uh, Nine is actually a satanic-themed movie which which talks about something that sa uh, satanic people believe in called the Age of Horus or the Aeon of Horus. Um, basically, there's three ages, and the age that we are currently at is called the Age of Horus, which will re result in a worldwide kind of um, chaotic situation that through it the church will die off and other things will, will die off out of necessity so that a purity can come and that uh, the, they can they can live in this in this new uh, new great world kind of thing going on. But in order to get through that, they have to go through the crap of now. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Nine, you know how it starts up with it's been after a huge war. Um, they're all they're all these little people, you know, um, which I don't really have time to get into all that. I do have the link to a to a blog um, if you want to look up the, all the specifics about it. I can email it to you or send it to you on Facebook, whatever. Um, but he really goes in depth on it. I'm just not going to go that in depth on it. Um, so throughout the movie, um, everyone who opposes um, opposes nine dies. Oh, what? No, nine. Nine is seen as the hero. Oh. Nine is what the satanic people see as themselves. Okay, if you notice, he's carrying light. They are the ones who have the true hidden knowledge. Satanism often plays on a mysterious hidden knowledge, uh, that, which they claim that the church and other things have, uh, uh, ha uh, hide, have hidden from people. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard people talk about secret documents in the uh, Library of Alexandria that were lost. And, uh, see what I mean? Just complete nonsense, stuff like that. Um, if you look at it, also the date that it was released, 9909, uh, satanic things play a lot on flipped on things being done backwards, 666. 999, because 6 flipped is 9. See what I mean? Things like that. Um, but once again, the the you see all the destruction on the, on the cover, but then you see a square in the center, you see 9, and you see, you see him as the light bearer. He's the one who's bringing the, bringing the enlightenment. Um, Satanists are real big on this whole idea of enlightenment. If you notice, the different numbers in 9 relate to different things. Like, for instance, 1 looks a lot like the Pope, doesn't he? He has, a, he has the, his popely garments. You know what I mean? He looks a lot like the Pope. Obviously, number one is a symbol of the church, the Christian church, okay? Um, but obviously, he ends up dying. And if you remember the part where they're in the library, uh, where they bust out the book, um, number one uh, tries to get them not to read it because it's, it, it's something they don't need. Once again, satanics uh, satanic people believe that the church is hiding or stifling knowledge um, that, that, that the rest of the world can't know about or else it would hurt their, their, their money grabbing, okay? Um... Or, and for also other reasons. But if you notice at the end, when they bury the people who died, and there are four who died, there is, there is what looks like um, a star on the ground where they're, where they're, where they're buried at, and the, and the light goes up and whatnot. Obviously, that's symbolic of the satanic symbol. Um, I mean, it's so obvious to see. And even in the part where they show the book, you can see what looks like three sixes on, on the book. It's very hard to see, but it is there. I mean, it is there. Watch it for yourself if you don't believe me. I mean, I'm not just making stuff up. Um, and also, if you, if you watch it, you can just kind of get a vibe from the movie. You know what I mean? It just feels dark. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. It just leaves you with this kind of weird feeling. But then after that, they die, they're buried. What happens at the very end? You guys remember? It starts raining. Where I just talked about that, that, that purity that comes through the age of horrors. That through the death of the church, through the death of all these things that are that are necessary changes, a purity will come. So I, I see what I mean? So they have the rain symbolizing the purity. Um, I already talked about the um, hidden knowledge. Uh, but yeah, uh, I encourage you to read that blog. If you'd like me to send it to you, I can. Okay? Just let me know. And uh, so there's, there's where, where, where a hidden message would be. So I mean, and th those are that's a more extreme example of hidden messages, but there are a lot of hidden messages in almost everything that we watch and hear and everything. So I mean, don't be too surprised. Just be discerning when you when you listen to stuff, when you watch stuff. Be discerning and don't just let it go in. You know what I mean? Um, and I'll I'll talk about more. Can Christians listen to non-Christian music? What do you guys think? I think it depends on the. Lyrics. Okay, so it's not so much whether it's Christian, just what the lyrics are saying. Right. Okay. What do you guys think? I, I, I mean, I think they can. I think that. Okay. I, I think music is think the most do. powerful form of media to influence us. Okay. Um, so I think, like Gracie says, that because, like, I mean, if you're listening to something that 
um, is sad, it's going to make you sad. Right. Like, right. You know? Yeah, I do. <laughs> my, my first girlfriend that I broke up from, I was listening to just sad songs 24-7. After, right. Like, yeah. Because that's what you wanted to hear, but it made it worse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you I gonna think say something? Christians can, as long as we're aware. Okay. Of you know, and not letting it get to us. Okay. And how? Like, again, <coughs> emotions. Like okay. With your emotions. But I think as long as you have your mind straight and your mind focused on God, I, I think as long as you keep that in mind. Okay. I really don't think it matters. All right. So you guys all, to to very different degrees, think that Christians can listen to non-Christian music. To different degrees. Okay. So that brings us to another question. What defines music as Christian? Is it the writer being Christian? Is it the lyrics being Christian? What defines something as being Christian music? It's when in the thing he knows they thank God first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's funny. Why that's funny to me personally is because um, there is this woman in the last church I was at who... <laughs> She seriously said something like that, and yeah. and you know it. it did that lots of be, people know. Lots of people say stuff. Oh, like okay. That stuff. You know, it, it, if God is in the thank you, it shows it shows that their heart was right when they were writing the lyrics. It's like, well, I mean, I suppose it could mean that. <laughs> I, okay. So uh, j just think about that. What actually defines something as a Christian music? Let's apply the exact same thing to a movie. What 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 makes something a Christian movie? If it's terrible. <laughs> It's produced poorly. <laughs> there are some good Christian movies, okay? There are some. Fireproof, for instance. I thought that I movie was pretty seen. good. It's like Courageous was a little bit drawn out, I thought. But it was good. Just a little drawn out. What? Oh. Uh, can you only watch news, movies, or shows that are Christian? See, see what I mean? If you follow this through to no Christians cannot at all any non-Christian music... That brings up this. What about news? Do the news anchors have to be saved? Do they have to report things with a sanctified voice? Like, what makes it Christian? What about movies? What about shows? You know what I mean? Like, what where, about restaurants? Yeah, exactly. So you, you're not going to shop at Walmart anymore because they're not owned by a Christian? Or maybe they don't sell anything. Do they have to sell only Christian products? See what I mean? Like, where is the line on this? Um, and oftentimes people won't actually have a defined line. I'm boycotting Starbucks because this and that and the other thing. Okay, but you're still shopping at Walmart. You're still shopping at Kmart. You're, you're still, still going to McDonald's. Ford. You're still buying a Ford. Like, what? you know what I mean? Like, where's the line on why you're uh, not drinking Starbucks anymore? I think a good example would be Chick-fil-A. Oh, my gosh. You guys remember that? Perfect example. <laughs> Just based on them being against homosexuality. Yeah. No. Like people, so many people were boycotting it like that. Yeah, and Pastor actually told that story about how uh, one person was like, "Well, we're not going to allow it into our into our city uh, because uh, they're not tolerant of homosexuals." And and the and the uh, news reporter said, "But aren't you being not tolerant too?" <laughs> um, but anyways, um, so then what filters, if any, should there be on your music? Should there be filters? What what do you base your filters off of? You personally? Or do you think there should be? Either or. Um, me personally, uh, no cussing, no violence talking. Okay. Um, no, no, what was that, someone? Violence talking. You know, okay. Like, I beat my wife and I killed my son and, you know. Whoa. What song are you listening to? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Explicit material. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Um... And probably things that I know play with my emotions. Well, so that brings up a question. What about um, the Beatles have a lot of songs about uh, uh, doing drugs? Like, for instance, Lucy in the right. Sky of Diamonds. Well, I, I, I put that in violence. Okay. Because it's really... Well, but the songs aren't really violent. No, I mean, like, drugs calls violence. In my yeah. category, not... Oh, okay, you know, I see. Okay, this is as it applies to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I'm, I'm sorry for misunderstanding. Uh, good. Was there anything else? Okay. Do you guys have anything to say? What are your filters? Like personally, I don't, I don't listen to a lot of rap, mainly because of content. If but, you like rap, Lecrae is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I think. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at just. The <laughs> I think the most rap I'll listen to is Eminem, but that's basically it. 
Oh, he's my guilty pleasure. And I keep saying, no, 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 but I then know, I, I keep, I keep trying, going back. I put it back on my iPod. I just, I can't. Ugh. Like a song, Toy Soldiers. Mm-hmm. I really like it so much. It's good to have a rapper that actually has some common sense and some res- uh, the idea of responsibility. You know right. what I mean? And I think Toy Soldiers just perfectly emphasizes that. You right. know what I mean? Like he's such a mature rapper. Goodness sakes. Some of the, some of the, like Snoop Dogg, I never know what he's even talking yeah. about half the time. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm getting off topic. And again. anything that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Like, doesn't make sense. Why was like the songs you were playing the other day? <laughs> that, didn't make sense. that was hard, right? What was that one band? Um, uh, Pearl, uh, Jam. no, the other one, uh, Pearl, uh, um, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam, yeah. Where I uh, had them listen to a Pearl Jam song and try to figure out what he was saying. <laughs> there was like, I don't know. do you have any filters that, that you would like to share? Um, like. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to some music with, like, a uh, curse word to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but if if the music um, makes me feel like doing something that I know I shouldn't do, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> then I, I won't listen to it. Um, if, if there's too much... Uh, bad language in it. I'll, I'll not listen to it mm-hmm. because music, like you, you have to sing along. You know? Yeah. Um. And it's hard when it's like. Yeah. Ma- it- right. <laughs> <laughs> like. Right. Um, like like uh, and, and and I'll listen to like um some comedy music like like The Lonely Island. Yeah. It has a lot of foul language in it, you know. But um, like that doesn't bother me. Um. So it's pretty much just kind of contextualized right. for, but, but for what that's you... that's comedy, you know, so it right. doesn't, like, incite any bad yeah. feelings in me, you know? <laughs> so, okay, um, I, I like that you guys all had something to say about your personal filters. Do you think other people should have filters, and if so, why? I think just based on prefer- personal reference, right? Okay. Preference, like, just... Okay. Yeah, like, the reason why I have, it, like, no cussing and stuff, because I, I tend to... Mimic or yeah, I kind of I kind of tend to uh, follow okay what I what I see and do, and um, if I don't watch myself, then I would start cussing. I gotcha. And so I don't want. To it just makes it harder for you. Is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's look at some different some different um some different lyrics. Okay, the first one is by a band called Five Round Frenzy, which technically you could call them Christian because the lead. Singer and many other people are Christian, but not everybody in the band is Christian. Okay, so mostly Christian. Um, but this is a joke song. It's called Oh Canada. Welcome to Canada. It's Maple Leaf State. Canada, Oh Canada. It's great. I'm having such a hard time not singing right now. Uh, the people are nice and they speak French too. If you don't like it, man, you sniff glue. The great white north, their kilts are plaid. Hosers take off. It's not half bad. I want to be where yaks can run free, where royal mounties can arrest me. Let's go to Canada. Let's leave today. Canada, Oh Canada. I see vous play. Okay. Okay. So there's, I mean, technically that's Christian, but what's the difference if a non-Christian saying these words it still have anything to do with God? So I mean, so, right. so I mean, you, you really can't say only Christian music because like, what happens if a Christian band doesn't sing something that, that doesn't have God or Jesus in it? Right. And then other bands go to the other extreme and they have a, a song that sounds worldly and they're talking about baby and whatnot, but then they throw in Jesus randomly and it's like, <laughs> is this a song to your lover or to your God? You know what I mean? It's kind of confusing. Um, but then here's another one uh, by a band called Frightened Rabbit called Keep Yourself Warm. Now, it has explicit content, okay? However, the message of the song is surprisingly enlightened coming from a, non- from a non-Christian group, okay? You won't find love in a won't find love in a hole. It takes more than effing someone to keep yourself warm. The idea of the song is there's more to re- more to relationships than just just having sex with someone. You know what I mean? It's talking about people who who are who are every night are with someone else. Well, that's a really good message, but he uses explicit m- m- content, and he's not a Christian. See what I mean? So, for someone who's not a Christian, I mean, this could definitely be something that's eye-opening for them. There's more to sex than just sex. See what I mean? Eye-opener, and that came from a non-Christian band. See what I mean? So that was a good message brought by people who aren't Christian. See what I mean? So that kind of throws another monkey wrench in there. 
if you believe that you can only listen to Christian music. See what I mean? Yeah. And then some Christian bands, like, they have no... Uh, there's no point to their music. It's just... Uh, it's so... Re... Recycled. Oh my gosh, so recycled. You know what I mean? And so there's, like, no creativity in it. It's hard to stay... To, to get into it, because the, the music isn't really your thing. It's just... It just sucks. You know what I mean? It just sucks. Like, then there's bands like Petra, and you're like, oh, yes... You know, and, 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 and I guess that's everybody's personal preference, but when I listen to the Christian radio, sometimes I just think, ah, like, good God, is there something else you can play besides this band? You've been playing for the past three years the same song, and I hated it the first time I heard it? Goodness sakes. But anyways, um, so then here's a song by absolutely Christian band, Newsboys, called Cornelius. And every generation's got the fearless few who can't be bought. They don't take polls or look around. They act on truth, and then they stand their ground. Come up and see the world stripped bare, the free indeed. They breathe a rarefied air. Yeah, they got spirit. Yeah, they got game. And some get christened with a righteous-sounding name. Now, this isn't about God or Jesus. However, it does have a, just a positive feel to it, and, and the things he's talking about are good that you almost want to follow and suit with. You know what I mean? It, it encourages you to do something good. But they didn't mention God or Jesus. See what I mean? Does that make sense? So then we get to this song, which is a worship song, but is wrong. Okay, it's a song called Your Love Never Fails. Um, Nothing can separate, even if I ran away, your love never fails. I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day, your love never fails. You say the same through the ages, you, your love never changes, there may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me, your love never fails. And then right here, the wind is strong and the um, the wind is strong and the water's deep, but I'm not alone in these open seas, because your love never fails. Then it goes, uh, oh, right here, the chasm is far too wide, I never thought I'd reach the other side, but your love never fails. And then it goes to the bridge, um, uh, you make all things work together for my good. Now on this surface this sounds like a true song and it and it's very easy to just get sucked in and, and you know worship with it and you know you get the tinglys and a lot of people like this song because they cry during it okay well let's actually look at the song um nothing can separate even if i ran away your love never fails well that makes it sound one of two ways one either there is no eternal punishment by implication or Two, you cannot possibly ever abandon your salvation. But we looked at that before, and there you can abandon your salvation. So if I ran away from God, surely that would put something between me and God, right? See what I mean? So that doesn't really follow. But then it comes to the end. You make all things work together for my good. No, actually, God doesn't work, make everything work together for my good. The Bible says that God makes everything work together for, for the good. And what, what he says, what he's talking about there, you can read it through Romans 8, 29. He actually finishes up the thought. To work us and to conform us into the image of Christ. That means that the things like child abuse that are in your in your, in your your history, uh, drugs that are in your history, um, if you're raped, all these different things, bad things that happen to you. God is capable of taking those bad things and producing a positive out outcome. Example, Joseph. Okay? His father... Favored him the most. He was he was he was the he was the favorite. His brothers sh uh, sell him to slavery, and then they make the dad think that he was brutally murdered or killed by an animal, whatever. Um, would you say that's a good thing? No, that's not a good thing at all. But what does Joseph say at the end when they end up in Egypt? What you meant for evil, God has worked for good, not just for Joseph. See, I mean, God. I mean, it's a good thing if you're happy, but that's not number one on God's chart. Number one on God's chart is that you're saved. He doesn't want you to live eternity in hell. See what I mean? That's what's number one on God's chart. He wants to save as many as would hear. See what I mean? That's what God wants. Um, sometimes we live this entire life struggling with something that we will never see freedom from until we get to heaven. But when we do, what a sweet freedom it will be. See what I mean? It's something to look forward to. Um... However, not all things work together for my good. This makes it sound like God is, is literally just overshadowing me with blessings no matter what I do in life. God's going to keep blessing me through it. No, not true. Proverbs talks about that, for instance. And it also makes it sound like um, God is most concerned for me. It's a me-centered gospel. Everything is about me. And it's not. In fact, everything in Christianity is about self-death. Talk, he talks consistently about picking up the cross and following after him. This song contradicts everything that that says, everything that that means. And it makes people assume things that just are not biblically accurate. So that takes us to a song called Battle Hymn of the Republic, which we were just talking about. Um, here's the first uh, the first line. I'm not going to do the whole thing because A, the lyrics were, were changed after she wrote it, and B, 
Um, it's just way too long. Uh, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. You guys all, you guys know all this, right? Uh, he hath loosed the va uh, fateful lightning of his terrible, swiss terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. You guys know that song, right? I, I know you do. Uh, well, so just a little bit uh, of a of a background on this. This was actually written. Um, does anybody know what manifest uh, manifest destiny is? Kind of. I've heard. Of Okay, we'll talk about it in just a second. This was written during the Civil War, which is right after the Manifest Destiny movement. Um, and America really had this idea, which many still do. It's right because we did it. It's it, it's the thing that we're doing, so it's right. It's got to be right. It's, it's okay for us to have slaves because that's what we're doing. It's okay for us to do these things to the Indians because they're the pagans. See what I mean? And a lot of this comes from the Old Testament where they saw it. Um, Israel taking the land, uh, the promised land, synonymous as them taking it, America. They saw it as synonymous events. So they did it to kind of mirror that. Um, don't worry, it's not a ghost. Um, which, Are we late? <laughs> which there was this idea of, of the manifest destiny, which basically what manifest destiny was, was that it was their obligation and they were destined to take over America from coast to coast. It was it was something that they were um, being guided towards, something that, that they were being called to. It was their responsibility, um, you know, kind of kind of that idea to it. Um, making sure I wasn't looking over my back like last week or two weeks ago, whenever that was. Um, and that was the idea of manifest destiny. And and Christians, uh, not Christians, Americans carried this idea over. Now this does anybody know when the Civil War happened? The 1800s. Does anybody remember what other things were happening in the 1800s? The cults, remember that? Mm -hmm. There was this very folksy religion in Christianity that was very uh, patriotized, I guess you could call. Um, and as a result, just a lot of different uh, doctrines were, were lost. And um, obviously the things that happened with, with with the cults and whatnot, the large majority of them being started in the 1800s, um, just kind of a large cluster cuss there. Um, and that's kind of the idea of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Um, it has this, you know, that, that whole idea to it. If you look at the words, I have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. We're talking about the second coming. Their, their role in the Civil War was aiding the coming of the Lord. See, I mean, they saw this as, this, they're, they're, they're making this a big deal. You know what I mean? Um, he's trampling out the vintage where the grapes of breath are stored. Those people in Revelation and whatnot that, that, are, that are, you know, bad things are happening to, it's our enemies. You know, we are God's army. We are God's anointed chosen. You see what I mean? Um, he hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. We are his truth. We are his hands. We are his prophet. Isn't it? You see kind of the idea of the song? And you can keep going. Oh, I snoozed it. Crap, dang it. Um, you can kind of follow along with this with the song and, and kind of see, um, you know, how it carries on. But you can kind of get it with just knowing this little bit of background here. Um, so obviously I talked about this, the Bible-based cults, America is clearing out the pagans. Who are the pagans? The Indians. The, uh, you know, all, the, all these different people. This was our land, you know. Now they um, were just fighting each other during the Civil War. During the Civil War, yes. However, right before the Civil War was Manifest Destiny that I was talking about, where, where it was their obligation. And, you know, the same, same mindset. Uh, and remember, it wasn't that much longer after it was first settled anyways. Um, let's see. 17... 76 was when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh, the Civil War was in the 1800s. We're talking about maybe some of the people could have potentially still been alive during the time of Manifest Destiny. Maybe not during Civil War. That's kind of living really old. We're talking about like year old. But, you know. Um, so uh, they were receiving the promises of Israel. The Old Testament became, became very um, not literal. It was not literal at all. It was very... Um, What's the word I'm looking for here? Symbolic. Um, when something's not literal. Um, oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Well, anyways, you guys get what I'm saying, I hope, right? And obviously, misinterpretation of the thing coming. They revolved everything around this this faulty idea, and they, they used scripture to back it up. <coughs> you know what I mean? Um, so... Real quickly about this. What about video games? Um, if you wouldn't watch it or do it, don't play it. I mean, it's that simple. If you're playing a video game where there's a sex scene and you wouldn't have sex with random strangers, don't play it. If you're playing a video game that has a sex scene and you wouldn't watch a sex scene, then don't play the video game. 
I mean, it's that simple. Um, game games have a rating system. Follow it. I mean, I know a lot of a lot of people who say no R-rated movies in my house. Okay, that's fine. Well, then you allow video games to have mature and up in your house, and it's like, well, they have the same violence, the same language, the same nudity. What, what separates it? See, what I mean, porn isn't necessarily about seeing naked people. The same thing can be achieved through cartoon porn. See what I mean? Because it's about the playing on the lust that is within you. See what I mean? It's about that that still um, irresponsible thing going on there. Anyways, getting a little bit off topic, but anyways, um, yeah, video games have a have a rating system. Follow it, you know. Um, news, for instance, is a biased and one sided thing. If you're gonna watch the news, don't take it as truth. Take it as with a grain of salt. Let's just say. Because first off, they're biased. They don't. They oftentimes only. It's like they just find every bad thing that happened in the world that day and just talk about it. And then puppies out of nowhere too. And there's some pictures of puppies. Oh, and by the way, a bunch of people died in Syria. Holy crap! Like, was did nothing good happen today? You know what I mean? Um, so take it with a grain of salt. And then, but then also when you hear something, look it up. It, maybe it's true, but maybe it's not. You know. Uh, yeah. For instance, they've demonized Israel um, when uh, – I really don't want to go get too much into this. But, I mean, let's just say it's a give-and-take thing. Israel isn't doing everything wrong. They're not doing everything right, but, I mean, they're not doing everything wrong. Uh, anyways, um, history is not necessarily complete. When, when you're looking at these different things, don't just blindly believe things. That's the whole message of what I'm talking about here discern the things that you are allowing into your life just just discern it is this a good thing is it a bad thing why why do i believe this why do i do this what's my reasoning behind it because we are shaping america see what i mean we are shaping the next generation the things that we do will have an impact um double check facts truth isn't isn't relative but opinions are sometimes people say something is fact and it's just it's just not um like, for instance, I was talking about Tosh.0, how sometimes he'll say things that are like they're fact, and it's like, well, I mean, it's a comedy show. Take it as comedy, not as not as gospel. Um, whatever you see, hear, feel, or do, weigh against scripture. Even if it's something you've been doing your whole life, stop and say, is this a good thing that I'm doing? Why am I doing it? Is this something that contradicts things that I believe? A lot of people will have compartmentalized beliefs where they'll, they'll know something is wrong, but they'll allow it something in their life in one area – See what I mean? Because they fail to see the connection, which is why I say constantly discern what you're doing and allowing in your life. Constantly. Because you're going to find new things every day. Oh, I don't believe in this. Well, aren't you kind of allowing that in through this over here? Oh, well, I guess I kind of am. See what I mean? Um, <clears throat> and obviously, we'll talk about this more later, but it doesn't have to do so much with whether you can do something but whether you should do something. Um, these are just real quick thoughts here. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, there it is. All right. So, just some last thoughts about about what we talked about here. First off, what we put in will come out. One way or another, um, it has, just has a way of resurfacing. Um, Luke chapter 6. Forty-six says, "Why do you call?" Me? Oh, is this right? No, I don't think this is right. Forty-five. There we go. Uh, the good person, um, the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasures produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Gracie was talking about this. Sometimes, don't watch a show just because of the temptation that you're going to face from it. You know what I mean? Um, if you have a, po a pornography problem, for instance, you probably shouldn't watch movies with nudity. You probably shouldn't play games with nudity. You should, probably shouldn't li listen to music that has something to do with, uh, like, you know, uh, I think it was Nicole brought up the thing about rap music, you know, with, with, with sometimes it's, it can be very violent sometimes, um, with, you know, rapings and those kinds of things. It's not good to listening to songs about bumping and grinding if you're having immoral thoughts anyways, you know what I mean? Like, if you're having a struggle, why put yourself through X? That's like an alcoholic going to a bar and expecting not to drink. Like, it's gonna happen. 
don't tempt yourself from something that you, you don't have to. What you put in will come out, though. Uh, like, I think it was Grace who brought this up. If you're listening to music, or maybe it was you. Somebody mentioned it. If you're listening to music with a lot of cussing, you're going to have a harder time not cussing. You see what I mean? It, the things that we put in ha inevitably come out of us. Um, but that takes us to, to the idea of be discerning. First John 4, 1, he's talking about the work of the Spirit, right? But then he gets to ch uh, verse 1 of chapter 4, and he says, discern the Spirit's. Discern the spirits, and it's it's the same principle that is in a lot of different places in Scripture that I'm really not going to waste my time going to, but uh, go through Scripture and you can look it up for yourself. The idea of be discerning with what you allow in your life, you know what I mean? There are, there were a lot of Christians who felt bothered about partaking of the Greek festivals because they just didn't feel like it was right. There were some who thought, you know, we shouldn't be eating the meat that was that's been offered to other gods. We shouldn't be doing that. And so what does Paul say? If you have a weak conscience, don't do it. If you don't have a weak conscience, don't do something that will affect your brother with the weak conscience. See what I mean? Try to look out for one another. Make it more about their best interest, not about what I think is best for me. We all have knowledge, he says, but knowledge puffs up. Love edifies one another. See what I mean? Um... Uh, these are just some things that I noticed. Fear, panic, and hallucinations a lot of times can be connected with horror movies. Um... I know a lot of people who have children in their house um, who they allow to watch the horror movies with them, and they have nightmares, they see things that aren't there, all kinds of bad things happen. You see what I mean? I I'm not trying to scare you guys, I'm trying to warn you. The things that we allow in our lives, they're there. Like Gracie said, it's there. For those people who have seen pornos, there's always at least one that's still stuck in your head. See what I mean? There are there are there are quite a few things from from my years in pornography that I can never forget. See what I mean? And that's something that sticks with you when you're having, let's just say, intimate time with your with with, with your with your partner. After the fact, it's a conscious thing where you have to not think about things that you saw in porn that you wouldn't have even be been tempted with if you never would have looked. See what I mean? And that's something you have to carry around with you for the rest of your life. Some things stay with you. Some things don't. Like I don't remember everything that I ever saw in porn. Do you know I mean? But a lot of it I do. Do you know what I mean? So there's always that 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 wait. Do you want your life to be harder than it already is? Do you know what I mean? That's what it comes down to. Do you, do you want to just let it go? We get we we get attached to things, movies, games, music, whatever. And I play video games all the time. I don't think video games are bad. But when we become at so attached to something that, that it starts wrecking our life, you know what I mean? Um. Uh, immoral activities or depression. You know, sometimes we'll look at the music that you're listening to. Is it something that once again, is glorifying immoral activity. Um, let's see, sexual temptations. Uh, I, I know, I know one guy who every single time that he that he uh, played a video game, he was tempted to go look at porn. So I told him, don't play that video game anymore. <laughs> it wasn't that hard. I mean, <laughs> if you've gotten yourself into a rut or a cycle, I mean, even a, even a psychologist can tell you this. Just avoid the avoid the uh, antagonizer. The what? The, the trigger. Yes, we talked about that. Yes, exactly. Um, shows or movies, you know, like that 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 show that Gracie was talking about, where it had a random sex scene in it. There's like within like the first five or ten, ten, ten minutes. Well, I come from a, from a background where I watch a lot of pornography, so I don't, I didn't watch the show. I just turned it off then and there and said, okay, well, I'm not watching this. You know what I mean, <laughs> no. Um, but then also, everything that you do will affect you. It'll affect your kids and it'll affect others around you. You know what I mean? At, especially as Christians. We're, if, let's just say this. If you get filled up with the world, you won't be able to witness to people in the world. Does that make sense? If you get filled up with the world, you won't be able to witness people to people in the world. See what I mean? So really be discerning with this kind of stuff. Pay attention to what you, what you, what you, uh, what you do. And, and let me just kind of clarify a few things. I do listen to non-Christian music. I do play video games. And I do watch movies that are not Christian. <laughs> uh, but I do have filters, and I'll, I'll mention that in a minute. Um, but don't participate in the wrong. Some people ask, well, what if, what if my spouse wants it in the house and I can't convince them otherwise? Don't participate in it. See what I mean? Uh, uh, if, if you feel like something is, is wrong, just, just don't be a part of it. Um, but you can pray for the situation. Pray for the people who are doing the thing that you feel is wrong. Pray that pray pray for you, you know what I mean? Um God is capable of protecting you. Why I say that is because some people say, well, my husband watches watches horror movies, and I'm afraid that it's letting something into the house. Well, you're covered by the blood of the lamb, not the not the door. 
So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. so if it gets in your household, just don't partake of it. You know what I mean? God can protect you. If you're concerned or if you're having problems with fear or whatever, pray and God will guide you through it. Even if it's something like panic attacks, God will guide you through it. Like, he, he, he will protect you. It's not like, you know, you need some talisman or some nonsense. So, uh, Borderlands 2 has a scene where, where it blasphemes the, whole, blasphemes the Holy Spirit, so I stopped playing it. See, I mean, I, I, these are, these are my, two, my two qualifiers. No nudity, no blasphemy. That's it. I allow, I allow cussing. I allow all kinds of other things. Really because I see it in the world anyways. I go out there and witness to people and they're smoking right in front of me and they're cussing right in front of me. What am I going to do? Stop cussing. I'm a Christian. You know what I mean? <laughs> or am I going to be the witness that they need to see? See what I mean? I see it all the time. Honestly, I become muted to it. Now, now I will follow what, what, what Ben said. If something has just a bunch of, 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 of language and stuff, I just won't pay attention. Like Deadpool. That movie had a bunch of cussing, so I haven't even seen it. And it had a bunch of nudity. Which, that's one of my things. I don't have anything with, with nudity. I have I have one movie. It has Jackie Chan's butt. <laughs> <laughs> but something tells me that that's not going to bother me. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, well, there... Oh, there... I forgot I put it in here. Deadpool has nudity and strong language. I don't... I don't allow... As you say, I mean, but I do allow... Like, Gladiator, for instance. A lot of gore, I still allow it. I mean, I butcher chickens. If, 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 death is a part of life. Um, Rambo, a movie with heavy violence... If that's something that you don't, see what I mean? Like if that's something you you struggle with, um, Exorcist, demonic activity, and, and it is I will say it, it ver is movies like this verge on witchcraft. You know you do need to be careful with, with the more extreme horror movies. If you want to watch horror movies, that's your own thing. But I would strongly discourage you from watching uh, movies that have like demonic stuff in it, just because. I don't know. I, I I've always felt weird about that, and you know, the Bible warns so much about witchcraft and that kind of stuff. That you might want to at least think about it before you do it. Just just question whether you should be doing that before you do it. But once again, it's it's your own personal like conscience. Um, so my list is, is nudity because I don't need the temptation and blasphemy because I feel like dishonoring God is just something that I can't be okay with. You know what I mean? That's something that I shouldn't be okay with. Borderlands 2 is a really fun game. But, I mean, I have to set my standards and I have to stick with them. You know what I mean? This is important to me. Um, be convinced in your spirit, not in someone else's spirit. Yeah. Back it up with the Bible. Does the Bible say something against it? See what I mean? Go to the Bible. Go to the Word. Go to prayer. But then set whatever you feel is right or wrong, stick, make yourself a list and stick with that list. You know what I mean? Hold yourself accountable. You know what I mean? Don't tempt yourself in things that, 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 that you don't have to. You know what I mean? Why make life any harder than it needs to? But make sure that you're not making a list off of what somebody else has told you. Well, Michael is convicted about horror movies, so I'm not going to watch him. No, 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 no. If you feel like that's something God is laying on your heart, then you go stick with that. See what I mean? But, I mean, it needs to be between you and God, um, which is what Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians. You know, make sure this is something where, where you know, your conscience is being scarred, unless it directly affects other Christians. And then you need to be, you know, maybe just cut it off, you know. Like, I don't I don't even ca casually drink. I don't drink at all because my I come from a family of alcoholics, and there are a lot of people in the community who are struggling with alcohol. So I just avoid the whole problem. Tattoos. I would love to get tattoos. I, I, I had my. I was actually um, thinking of what I could get for a full sleeve over here. Then I thought, whoa, what am I doing? I'm a pastor at a church, and there's a lot of old people in our church. Like, I, I don't, why offend people unnecessarily? Like, why? So, did, any questions about anything we talked about? I didn't think it was going to be that long, so when I saw that I was getting close to time, I tried to just plow through the last two slides. Did I? Did, was anything confusing? No. I just to add on yeah, go ahead. top of what you said, I think it's very important for us, like, say um, we invite, say I, I invite you over to watch a movie and it has nudity. Well, I should be conscious that you don't like to watch, no, you know. I see movie, what you're saying. So I should not play that. Maybe I should pick another movie, you know. I got what you're saying, yeah. Just because it could hurt you for when you go home, now you're tempted. You yeah. Know? And, you know, those who have had kids, or had kids in their house at least, know that movies act, can act as porn for a kid who's, you know, sexually active enough. Um, horny is another word. Um, you know, like, for instance, there's um, a movie that I'm thinking of right off the top of my head when I couldn't get on the internet to look at stuff. I'd w I would watch it, um, and it had a sex scene in it that actually showed a brief nudity. But um, the actors were pretending to, you know, do their thing. I mean, 
A little bit creepy if you just stop and think about, like, how would you have liked to have been that actor? Be like, this is so creepy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyways, um, where they pretended, like, the climax and everything. It was very, very creepy. But, I mean, it was in that movie, and my parents had it, and I was able to watch it. See what I mean? As a substitute for, tra for pornography. Yeah. See what I mean? So that's actually a really good point. Really good point. Anything else? Okay. So, uh, in conclusion to everything that we've talked about, America is changing, and uh, we need to be aware of that. But we also need to be careful, because that means media is changing. Which means that as we watch movies and as we as we listen to music and everything, we just need to be discerning and make sure that what we're putting in is, is things that, you know, we're okay with morally. You know what I mean? Don't scar yourselves. If you feel like something is wrong, just don't do it. Okay? Um, yeah. So, and there are no questions and no comments. Good? Okay, all right. So the question of the week, how do you find your purpose? What is God's will for your life? How do you find it out? You read uh, Rick Warren's book. Purpose Driven Life? Oh. I thought you were going to say a Joel Osteen joke. <laughs> What are those, Michael? Don't worry about it. They're mine. Ben said you can't have any.